1996 was an incredible year for NASCAR. It was also an incredible year for NASCAR cards and trading cards in general across all sports. And the reason is because of this product. In January of 1996, Press Pass base product included the first ever event used sports memorabilia card. They included a piece of race use tire on a set of seven inserted trading cards. There was an additional eighth added in this Rusty Wallace that was part of a die cast set that included a 164 scale car and a 124 scale car. But this card was numbered out of 1,996, whereas the rest were numbered out of 500. And this was only, it was not individually serial numbered, it's just one of 1,996. And there were two different versions of the boxes that were released, a retail and a hobby version. Retail, I believe, had 36 packs. Hobby had 24 packs. The odds were essentially the same in what you could get. No autographs, but you could get a piece of race-used memorabilia. There were inserts in each, or parallels inserted in each pack called the Torker. And in the hobby version, you had the Molten Red right there. And in the retail version, you had the Liquid Blue. And I'll show you, I'm going to open a retail box, I'll show you what the parallels look like. And you can tell the difference between a hobby and a retail, because below the Press Pass logo, you see the word hobby. In the retail version, you don't see hobby. Simple as that. Five levels of insert cards. Let's see if we can get a... Authentic race use rubber cards. Focus clear acetate cards. FQS, fastest qualifying speed. Those are really cool looking cards. New and improved cup chase. Those are pretty cool. Uh, scorchers and torquers. Yeah, new molten red and liquid blue. Yeah, molten red and liquid blue. So they include on both boxes uh, the fact that they exist in each of the products, but you don't get you can't pull a Scorcher and a Torker in the same pack. They were exclusive to hobby or to retail product. Torkers, insert card in every pack. And when they say insert card, they mean the parallel. And of course, top quality materials like thick board UV coating and foil stamping on every card plus limited production. I don't exactly know how limited these were, but in 1996, this was the lower end product released by Press Pass, I believe retail on them was, or you know, at the hobby shops or the trade shows, about $50 to $55. And then I believe the retail version was somewhere around $40 to $50, somewhere around the same price. Packs usually sold for a couple bucks a piece if you bought them individually. And they sold them at Target and Walmart and Meyer if you're from the Midwest. And later on, the year following, once they, once it was 1997, 1998, they would, this company, you guys are probably all familiar with it, Vintage, would sell, actually I don't know if the name of the company was Vintage, but they would sell the, the retail returns or the packages uh, or the boxes at retail for around $20 to $30. There used to be a big selection of sports cards available at Target and Walmart and Meyer, and you could buy just a few year old product full boxes for a fraction of the price so that was a delight for me because these came back for sale and I found one of these recently on eBay it does have the vintage seal and the interesting thing about this is that I do remember this happening with other products when I would see these boxes in the stores in the 90s is that this one does not have a factory seal however what they did is they rewrapped over the sticker that they would put on. So that means there's two layers of factory seal here. And they would do that as a precaution because sometimes, from what I understand, this is not fact because I never checked, but just what I observe and what I understand and what I believe to be true, 
is that sometimes these boxes would show up because they were handled. They were either put on retail shelves at full price or, you know, traveled around the country and they weren't sold. So sometimes you'd have a box that would have some damaged shrink wrap and they would reseal it. When it has the price tag on there and it's on a non-factory sealed box, this is how it's supposed to look. Or here's an actual factory sealed retail box. It's supposed to have the press pass with the checkered flag on top. That's just, that's known. That's what press pass had. But I believe that this was nothing more than a case of the shrink wrap being damaged. So they took it off and they resealed it. And that's it. Simple as that. So this is the box that I'm going to open today. And before I do that, I want to show you, this is my set of 1996 press pass burning rubber from the first series. These are the first event used, race used cards uh, for, from any sport on the market, 19, January 1996. Dale Earnhardt. Let's go in number order. Let's see. There we go. Okay. Kyle Petty was the first card. This card was given to me by an individual who pulled it out of a pack. I would call on the back of the Beckett Guides when I was a kid and just see if people would buy, sell, trade. If they had anything new, I would usually get a big phone bill at the end of every month. My parents would get upset with me because I called every one of the business card advertisements in the back of Beckett. And I, through dealing with a bunch of different individuals, I found this, this gentleman, and I can't remember his name, but he bought and sold and traded just like I was, you know, he was out there searching and had a collection. So just asking the dealers and other collectors, I ended up getting in touch with him. And I think he was lived in North Carolina and he ended up sending me this card for free because I was just after it. I was after this set and I just really wanted to get a hold of it. And he what didn't want to sell it because he pulled it out of a pack. And, you know, we had talked and I think we had traded some things. And uh, he just eventually was like, you know what, I'm going to give that to you. You're going to appreciate it. And dear Lord, you know, if it, if it isn't 25 years later and I still have the card. So I've definitely appreciated it. And these cards have brought me significant joy since then. So Kyle Petty. And it tells you on the back which race the piece of tire was used. Uh, you're the proud owner of Kyle Petty Race Used Tire Card. This press pass certified authentic piece of racing history was used on tiles. Kyle Petty's Miller Genuine Draft 500 winning car, June 4th, 1995. We got the Jeff Gordon, which is the card shown on the cover of the box. The picture is actually different. This is a much more vibrant, true to form uh, color representation of Jeff Gordon's car on the box. It also has Coca-Cola on the rear deck lid. The one on the card does not have Coca-Cola on the deck lid and it's a more muted uh, version. Looks like it was probably taken at Daytona or something like that where there was an overcast day, whereas the one on the box was taken on a, on a bright and sunny day. Anyway, just an observation. And this one was used, his Winston Select winning car on May 20th, 1995. The man, Dale Earnhardt. Also, if you notice, the only driver that has an actual signature instead of just a printed, uh, printed name plate uh, that had to do with his, his, uh, his copyright, his branding, and all that stuff, which was, which was genius. I loved paying attention to that when I was a kid. All right, and this one was used at his, let's see. UAW GM Quality 500. Dale started the day dead last and masterfully finished the race in second place. The 41 positions gained in that race were the most by any cup driver in the 1995 season. Terry Labonte, he went on to win the championship this year in 1996. Goodies 500 winning car uh, August 26, 95. Sterling Marlin. Daytona 500 winning car on February 1995.
Bill Elliott. Miller Junior Draft Board. 500 pole winning card, 1995. Mark Martin. UAW GM Quality 500 winning card on October 1995. Let's see. Is that the same race as Dale? Yeah. So Mark Martin won the race. Dale Earnhardt came in second. That's pretty cool. And then... The Rusty Wallace car was for, I believe, 25 years of Miller. Yeah, congratulations. You're the proud owner of a Press Pass Rusty Wallace burning rubber race use tire car. The Press Pass certified piece of authentic racing history uh, was used on Rusty's 25th anniversary card, the Miller 400, September 1996. So this card was made much later in the year, uh, September. Uh, the tire is from September. And one thing that's interesting about this card is the tire is significantly thicker than the other cards. Not sure exactly why that is. And if you can even tell from this video, but you can kind of see the wrinkles. And that has to do with like the pressure uh, that's being created and the, and the difference in height of the rubber. You can see it's kind of the case is being pressed up against the rubber there because it's significantly thicker. I'm going to open the vintage box because it's a difficult sell if I'm ever going to resell these boxes, which I do not plan on it. It's a possibility, but I do not plan on it. It's a much more difficult pill to swallow having a non-factory sealed box. Although the pedigree, my understanding of these boxes, I am totally fine and confident that this was an unsearched, untainted box because of what I experienced in the 90s. So, with that being said, I'm gonna open up a 1996 Press Pass box. There are no autographs in here. We are searching exclusively for, I mean, there are the Acetate card is a great card. The FQS cards are great cards. A Cup Chase is great. But we're really looking for a burning rubber card. No autographs available in this product. The first product of that year that had an autograph in it from Press Pass was the 1996 VIP, which also had the first ever uniform worn by Dale Earnhardt Sr. offered in that product. And those are incredible boxes to open. I did purchase a box in 2012, did pull a Dale Earnhardt Sr fire suit card and it was such a delight and such a joy. And I mentioned in my 1996 Press Pass Premium box opening that my dad and I used to go to the card stores or to the, you know, to Meyer and Walmart and we used to fill the packs of Press Pass Premium. And we also felt the packs of the 1996 Press Pass. Never found a rubber card in one of these packs. It was disappointing because I really enjoyed the set, but also it was kind of understood. These were one every, the odds of finding one of these rubber cards is one every 480 packs. Let me confirm that. Whereas the premium was one every 288 packs. So they're just, that there were greater odds. Yeah, one every 480. All right. I purchased a bulk lot of maybe 50 or 100 of these packs recently, and the cards, you could just tell they were all stuck together. The packs were kind of like, vac almost like vacuum sealed to the cards. They were probably just kept in a hot climate not in the right situation and so i opened up a few packs and they were just all stuck together unfortunately but that's okay we are those are just packs that i bought but these packs inside the box are nice and moving around so here we go so the first card on the top joe rutman is the liquid blue Torker or Scorcher? Let's see.
liquid blue torker. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. Scorcher red. So there we go. Joe Rutman. Got a Dale Sr. Monte Carlo. Rusty Wallace. Awesome Bill. These cards are perfect. These cards are absolutely perfect, just like I remember them in 1996. Not stuck together at all. Jeff Gordon. That's awesome. Lake Speed. I remember being at Michigan. I think it was 95. Could have been 96. Where, And I was sitting in the grandstands and I saw Michael Waltrip uh, cut Lake Speed off and in the on the pit road after the end of the race. And then he punched <laughs> He reached in and he punched him. And Mike Waltrip has talked about that incident uh, since then. I think on his podcast. And uh, yeah, it was really funny. Hut Strickland. All right. Butch Miller. What an incredible experience. Now I can feel the cards are a little bit kind of stuck together. That's interesting. I feel like there's one of those clear acetate cards in here. The way that was squeaking. Nope. Morgan Shepard. Torker. Bobby, Leblon Bobby Labonte checkered flag insert. First actual insert. Bob Strait. Monte Carlo. Terry Labonte. Ernie Irvin's comeback car number 88. He drove a few races at the end of the year. Ooh, that would be a badass one to get autographed. Rick Hendrick, Ray Evernham, and Jeff Gordon. Awesome. Dale Jarrett smoked, smoked him at Daytona with this car. Ward Burton. Rick Corelli. Rick Corelli. Oh, Rusty. I think this was Derek Cope at the time. Derek Cope. Michael Waltrip. Bill Elliott. Oh, the man. Such a badass card. I'm going to put that in a penny sleeve. It would be cool if we got a torker of the Dale Earnhardt Sr.'s car, card. I would really, really like that. And, and some interesting, all the rules, probably the no purchase necessary rules are all inside the foil pack. I'm not going to read that off, but just so you know. John Andretti. Bobby Labonte. And from what I remember, you should be able to make a, a full set. I think there's 130 cards or something like that in this set. Uh, and you should be able to make a full set out of the out of the box. Out of one box. Oh, another Dale Earnhardt. Sweet. Let's see what else we got. Oh, Morgan. Two Earnhardts. What a day, what a day. This is just a blast. I never thought I'd be opening up another box of these, to be honest. It's just, I just never did. <laughs> I just never did. So I'm happy that I'm able to do this right now. Such a big part of my life at this time. It was very soothing for me to chase after these cards and to go to the shops with, um, with my dad, Jeff Gordon. And, uh, you know, Sterling Marlin. And uh, it was just a, it's just a very fond time, very fond time. And then as, you know, several years passed, started to get older, things in life started to happen. It took me away from the collectibles. And uh, this was just such a, such a special time in my life. Silver Bullet. I always loved that car. They're, the photography and video, you just can't capture the vibrance of these cars from the 90s. And I'm sure 
some of the cars today too i know some of the cars today are just very vibrant but they're very busy as far as the designs are concerned this is a busy design but it's just like it's so badass and when you saw it on the track you still knew who the sponsor was you knew whose car that was and the metallic blue set off with that electric pink incredible to see just like jeff gordon's car this car did not look like this on the track it looks dark even the box cover doesn't do the car complete justice the car just like man that thing was glowing when it was going around the track and the people that saw that car in person know exactly what i'm talking about it just it was just different Oh, that's awesome. Bobby Allison winning the 1988 Daytona 500. Gotta get... Whew. I was watching a special on him on YouTube last night uh, where it just, it, it just went through his whole his whole story and his whole racing career, and it was, it was incredible. It was heartbreaking. It was powerful. Bobby Allison is, like they say in the Dale Jr. download, he's an absolute treasure. Nothing short of a treasure. Torker checklist. Ooh, cup chase. Sweet. Now, the cup chases, similar to the oil slicks that I mentioned when I opened up the 1997 Press Pass Premium Box, you can pass these easily. Because look at that. It's, 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 it's buried in, in, the, in the photograph. Let's see. But if you were sorting through the, through the cards making a set, you would easily be able to tell because the back clearly is printed with cup chase instead of a profile like this. Pretty cool. Awesome to have it. Ken Schrader, awesome to have it. Would have been great if back then you were going for a Jeff Gordon or a Dale Earnhardt. You'd want a Mark Martin, you'd want a Rusty Wallace, but for the most part, you wanted a Jeff Gordon or a Dale Earnhardt Sr. See this pack is, see how that's all wrinkled and like kind of vacuumed a little bit? That's what all the packs were like that I got out of the but you couldn't even move the, you couldn't even begin to move the pack on the, on the card inside. But that was from the lot that I purchased um, on eBay earlier. Ooh, checkered flag, Jeff Gordon. Very cool. But yeah, anyway, back to the cup chase. He really wanted a Jeff Gordon or a Dale Earnhardt Sr. Because let's be honest, those were the ones really fighting for the championship. Rusty Wallace you wanted, Mark Martin you wanted. And then you also, uh, and then Terry Labonte just kind of smoked him this year, though. Uh, so he came, he, he kind of came out of nowhere. He was strong for the whole year. Obviously, he had to be. <clears throat> but he just wasn't, he wasn't expected like the other guys were. Oh, Michael. Man, three Earnhardts. <laughs> That's awesome. Another Bobby, such an awesome car. So anyway, the the documentary I was watching about Bobby Allison, they they talk about how he doesn't have any recollection of winning the 1988 Daytona 500 because of his crash four months later uh, after winning that race at Pocono. And they show him watching it. There's a FQS. They had the the car card, and then they have the driver card. Hopefully, we'll pull a driver card so I can show you the difference. These are, this was a fun set. Those are really cool looking cards. Basically, it just told you what the fastest qualifying speed was at the Die Hard 500, 1995, 194.212 MPH. Incidentally, that was the last Talladega race I went to. Old Jeff with Brooke. Gee golly, Brooke was... Definitely, definitely, <laughs> definitely an incredible woman to <laughs> lay eyes on as a 12 or 13 year old kid, tell you what. Her 
her 1994 Trax card with Jeff Gordon, where she's wearing like that cheetah print. I think I mentioned it in another in another one of my videos. Oh boy. Oh Mark. Bill Elliott, such a sweet, sweet car. 1995, he also drove the Thunderback car. Sick. Bill Elliott. Following year out of this product in 1997, just the Press Pass base product, was the first time we saw Chase Elliott on a card. He's just a little baby sitting in his dad's, the driver's seat of his dad's car, of, the, of, his, uh, of his race car. Family Channel car, such as that was such another badass looking car when you saw it on the track. Twerker, ooh, this Richard Petty's sweet. That is sweet. Right. Dick Trickle, Ernie, Bill Sedwick, is that Ricky Craven? Yep. 96, 96, 97, Ricky Craven just freaking flipped all over at Talladega. I think it was 96. I can't remember. Jeff Bodine, Dave Marcus, Ted Musgrave, the Family Channel car, Mike McLaughlin. I'm going to see if I can make a set out of these because having my own, my own set that I made is important to me. I lost all my trading cards except for my burning rubbers uh, and a few others um, lost them all in a storage unit in 2012 which is just gut-wrenching talk about that another time but I purchased uh, a set off of eBay a couple of years ago for like five bucks or something but it's different it's different to have the set you made in your hands um, it's just it was just more sentimental. There's you know searching going around with my dad going around with You know just Trying to find these rubber cards and having these packs be a product of of that pursuit It was just there was a lot of stuff. Oh another cup chase. What in the hell? Jeremy Mayfield That's two cup chases. Let's see Checkered flags one every nine packs. Torkers one every one. Burning rubber one every 104 or 480. Focused, which is the, the acetate card, one every 72 packs. Cup chase one every 24 packs. So since there are 36 packs in this box, technically there's one box every three that has um, that has two. So I got lucky. I got one. Uh, one like that, and I should end up with three FQS cards because they're one every twelve. But we're looking for that burning rubber. It's really what we're looking for. Come on, baby. Think, think we're gonna get it? Mark Martin, old Jack, Jackie baby. Jack Roush is responsible for me being able to go to Talladega and have the experience I had. My old man used to work for him back in the day, so he called in a favor, got some paddock passes for Talladega, sat right behind Earnhardt Sr.'s pit, right in front of. Victory Lane, Talladega, 1993. Rusty Wallace went over right in front of us. I couldn't see it because it was actually down a little bit. Dad saw it. Still remember what he looked like when that happened. He was holding the camera uh, in his hand, this Minolta, and just had his mouth open like, holy shit. I can't believe what I just saw. And, of course, I was a little kid. I didn't know what the hell was going on. I was like, what happened? What happened? And then we ran down the fence like where Rusty's car was and saw car all torn apart and Dale Earnhardt senior running out there pulling his car up running out and I was like dang dad that ninja's going over there to 
What's he doing? Why is he dressed like a ninja? And it was because Dale Earnhardt Sr.'s fire suit was white with black, and he had the goggles on. I couldn't tell what's going on. Oh, the mind of a 12-year-old, or a... No, at that time I was 10. The mind of a 10-year-old. What's that ninja doing? <laughs> Jeff Green. It's really funny. It's just joy thinking about that. That moment. Checkered flag. Sterling Marlin. All right, baby. Old Sterling, we're praying for you, man. Not a good hand you've been dealt, buddy. I, you know, it's, 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 oh man. Steve Cope, Jeremy Mayfield, Lipton T. On. We're trying to will one of these burning rubber cards. Come on, baby. Want one of those burning rubber cards. Want the thrill of pulling one out of a pack for once. Tom keeps going off and interrupting the video. Todd Bodine, Sterling Marlin, Daytona 500 winner. Yeah, baby. See, you can see a little bit more the glow of that car. It still just doesn't do it. Still doesn't get it. Oh, man. We're down to our last six packs. No. Come on, baby. Burning rubber. Richard Petty Torker. Uh, FQS. Ricky Rudd. Let's see, where did he qualify on the pole? Charlotte. Hmm. Yeah, well, I guess this is probably... He qualified on the pole for the race where Dale Earnhardt made it all the way through the pack and where Mark Martin ended up winning. So, interesting. That's pretty cool. Oh, probably look through the rest of these. Sterling, Ricky. Man, these guys both took wild rides at Talladega. One in 1994, one in 1996. Actually, the Ricky Craven, I can't remember if it was 96, 97. I'm pretty sure it was 96. But then Ken Schrader took a wild ride on the, on the back stretch. And that car, I guess, is either at one of Rick Hendrick's car dealerships or in like a museum of some sort in, in Charlotte, I'd imagine. And uh, Rusty Wallace, checkered flag. And that car was just flopping around, just flipping end over end craziness. Another Jeff Gordon. In terms of popularity of drivers and things like that, when NASCAR cards eventually catch on to whatever's going on with this trading card market right now, and especially this product, I will probably regret opening this. I mean, I'm having a lot of fun right now, but just in terms of dollar value, this being the first product ever to have a piece of race used, event used, sporting material on it, this this product is just it's so important to the hobby that I I'm excited to see what this does on open versions of this product or the rubber cards because man I mean, if, if the hobby doesn't take notice that this was the first to do it, then that says a lot about what is actually going on in the hobby. That it's not about a genuine interest in what was important in the hobby and in sports and who the trendsetters and who the first to do it were. Because this is the first of a kind. <sighs> Man. There was another point I was trying to make, but I can't remember. <laughs> but I, uh... I'm 
I'm I'm I'm just delighted that I'm able to be opening these packs right now. This is this is an incredible feeling to be able to reconnect. But three more. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Doesn't need to be anything big. Last pack. Oh, rats. That's okay. Oh, looks like we got another Earnhardt, though. So that's great. I'll just pull that right off the back. Is that four? That's not too shabby. Oh, there it is. There's the driver version of the FQS, and you can see it was kind of stuck to the card in front, so there's a little bit of coating that got pulled off that's unfortunate but the so so you had the driver version and then you had the car version and they had corresponding as far as I know they had a corresponding car and driver version well didn't get the rubber card again <laughs> probably like in my life I've probably opened like 10 boxes of these and felt I don't know how many packs thousands thousands of packs no joke all right all set so let's do okay, do I mean we did get four checkered flags, which was one every nine. We did get three f fastest qualifying speeds. Those were one every 12. So that was correct. And then we ended up with two of the cup chases. Where did my other cup chase go? There he is. Wouldn't have been the most stout drivers back in 1996 to get a cup chase from. Kenny Schrader was always up there. He was, he was, he was contending. A little bit. He was in a Hendrick car. He was he was stout. Jeremy Mayfield, you know, he he had some he had some flashes. He had some flashes. He was good. But so we got two cup chases, and then we ended up with two Gordons. We might have had another Gordon in there because I wasn't setting those aside, so there might be another one in there, which is great. And then we have four senior, no torquer, so it doesn't have the blue foil. It just has the gold. The blue foil would have looked like, like that. And then on the hobby version, you had a scorcher. So where it's blue, it just would have been red. And that's it. All right. Well, this was a joy and a delight to be able to revisit the experience of opening box of 1996. Press pass did not pull any of the rubber cards, which I was looking for, which were just the joy of my life in 1996 and the 1997, but I still do have my full set from when I was, uh, you know, 12 or 13 years old. So uh, thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate you taking the time to uh, go, you know, experience this journey again with me and listening to what I'm saying. So thank you very much. If you like what I'm making, if you like this video, please hit that thumbs up button, leave a comment in the comment section and subscribe. It would it would mean a lot. So thank you very much. I appreciate it. And until next time, I'll see you later.